here's the color panel. So let's introduce you to some major features here in DaVinci Resolve now that we are on the color panel. Uh, first of all, this is your mini timeline right here. And your mini timeline will show the entirety of your project down here. If it's a short project or a, or a feature project, it's going to show your entire project down here. And the way you zoom up to this is you hold down Control or Command on a Mac and you scroll with your mouse. By the way, if you're using one of those, uh, if you're using a Macintosh and you're using one of those mighty mouse thingies with just the slick surface and it's all slidey and doesn't really have a true middle third mouse button on it, uh, take it right now, pick it up, and drop it into the garbage, and go buy a real mouse, one that has uh, three keys, because you're going to need it for DaVinci Resolve, because you really need that middle click button to do it, perform some very, uh, func very specific functions, very important. So yeah, the mighty mouse won't won't cut it. Uh, I'd say get a real mouse, and use it with uh, three three points on it. Uh, the left click, the right click, and the middle mouse click. Anyway, but yeah, this is our timeline here, and we've got and to zoom up on your timeline if you need to really kind of zoom up and see what you're doing. Right now, we have this clip selected, and we are grading the clip that the playhead is over. It will automatically select the clip that your playhead is over for for grading. So wherever your playhead is, it is going to be grading that specific clip. If you need to zoom on this timeline, hold down Control and scroll up. If you hold down Control and scroll down, it will zoom out. If you hit Shift Z like in Final Cut Pro 7, it will show your entire timeline. You can also hit Control Plus, Control Minus, or Command Plus, Command Minus on a Mac, and it will zoom up and zoom out. So a couple of little shortcuts there. Up here, this is your basically your program monitor. This is where you're seeing all your final grades being done right here. Up in this corner, this is a serial node editor. This is where you're going to be performing your effects, your color effects. You're going to be doing it in, an, in what's called an input-output fashion. We will explain this as we start using it. Down here are your main grading tools. You have color wheels down here. You have a log function for color wheels. You have primary bars. If you hit on these little dots right here. By the way, we are on the color wheel tab right here. We're going to be using this to perform some color correction. And we've got our curves here as well to be doing some, um, some tone correction and color correction as well. Let's go over these icons over here, these little icons right here. Right here, first of all, this is your camera raw button. If you're working with raw footage, something. If you're not, if you're working with DSLR, this really won't apply. If you're working with Red or Alexa or Canon RAW, you'll click on this little camera, and whatever clip you have selected. Well, first of all, you can go in and change the raw settings here by pulling this down here. Tell it to decode using either a clip or project. And if you choose a clip, like it, let me give you an example here. This first clip here, the ISO was a little too low on the red footage right there. And as we move along here, so the exposure seems, you'll see the darks are kind of crushed in this image here. So the ISO is way too low. So I can access the camera raw footage, go down and tell, I, tell this that I want to change the clip settings instead of the project settings. We don't want it to read all red files the same way because some of them might have the ISO set properly. This one did not. So now I can click on, and it opens this stuff over here where you can change all these items pertaining to the red footage. I can click on this and say, I really wanted this to be 800 ISO click away from that and suddenly boom this changes and treats this as though it was ISO 800 and you cut, cut to the next clip let's see what this one was this one was shot at ISO 640 so maybe I want to match my ISO looks like they started shooting 800 and realized that that was too low of an ISO and they changed it to 640 for the rest of the for the rest of the project so I'm gonna go back to this clip let's change that to 640 as well there we go and now it's not so bright and it matches these other clips to an extent but notice here, I've got one shot that's 16 by 9. I go to the next shot, and this one's 185. They shot in two different resolutions as they did some pickups for this project here. We will visit that item as the very last step of the coloring, of this coloring process. This next tab is a nice color checker, uh, kind of a color matcher sort of item. If you have a chart that you're bringing in, you have different types of charts that you can shoot with the camera. If you're shooting using two different cameras, you can bring, you can shoot them both on the same chart, bring these in, and color match those cameras, and set a master color uh, setting to get two cameras to match. I'm not really going through that right now. I'm gonna that will be something up for another tutorial. But this is our basic color panel right here. Under this, we've got three tabs zoom up to that. We've got three tabs here for our color wheel grading here. We've got our basic primary wheels. What these are here is you've got lift, gamma, gain. Offset is kind of on its own because lift is your dark levels in your image. Gamma is your mids, is your mid levels in your image. And gains are your highlights or the whites. So you got blacks, your grays, and your highlights. 
or your dark areas, your mid region, and your highlights there. An offset is basically controlling your entire the entire tone of the entire image. This controls everything all at once. So it's basically like grabbing all three of these and combining them into one. This one here gives you offset. Now you've got a color wheel here to adjust colors in your dark areas, in your mid areas, and in your highlights. And down here, this is your dark, so this is your tone slider. That's what the Y stands for. Your Y refers to your brightness levels, your brightness contrast levels essentially. You've got a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel with every video ch with every video clip that you're working with. Um, video works in RGB color space and you have the Y for the brightness levels. So this is your brightness slider and this is your color wheel controlling your RGB values. Same here in your mids you've got your RGB values and your Y slider. RGB values, Y slider, and so on. Clicking on the next tab here, there's a nice little color slider here to manipulate uh, a specific color channel here. It's very similar to the color wheels, but you can actually go and control your red values, your green values, and your blue channels very specifically in the darks, mids, and highlights. And then once again, these are the tone sliders. They do the very same thing as they do in your color wheels here. And these are called your primaries bars because these are for what we call primary color correction. Primary color correction is really for fixing your image globally, the entire image itself. Secondary is when you go in and start changing very specific colors like a, trying to boost some reds or blues or suppress the blues or the yellows or something like that. Those are adjusting secondaries. And then on your third little tab here you have this log slider. If you're working with something that's shooting in log like a Sony camera or a Canon camera that's shooting in log format, it's very flat footage and th these color wheels here are specific for that. We're not really going to get into that because we're working with red footage and DSLR footage is very similar. Go to the next one which is your RGB mixer. And Once again this is just another tool to be able to control your output. After you are done doing some grades you're able to control the what's called the output of a channel here and we're not really going to get into this right now. This gets a little bit more complex but we are going to be sticking with mainly with the basic color correction which is your color wheels and your primary bars here. As we move over to this side here, these little icons here, we've got your curves. Curves is for adjusting tone and fixing contrast on a curve. We will get into that and we'll start showing some examples. This is your qualifier. This is for selecting, for creating a mask of what you want to color correct on an image based on hue, saturation, and luminance. You can create a mask and we will show you how to do this based on hue, saturation, and luminance. This is what's called a power window. Power windows are for selecting a certain geographic portion of your image and correcting it based on a geographic portion of your image. You can choose squares, a bezier curve, you can do a circle, and you can feather it off. There's a whole bunch of things we can do in here. And this is a tracker. You can use your mask. You can track masks with your tracker right here. If somebody, if you do a mask over somebody's face and kind of bring bring up the exposure on somebody's face. The tracker does a really good job of tracking somebody's movement and keeping that mask locked to the face. Then you also have uh, your blur channel and your sharpen channel. This will sharpen your image or blur your image uh, depending on which direction you drag your radius here. We'll get into that as well. That's kind of a finishing thing there as well and you can actually blur very specific channels as opposed to just the overall image which can soften up a look or soften up the highlights and there's some things you, we can do there. It's your key input, key output. We're not really going to cover this right now but this gets a little bit more complex but it starts showing uh, what sort of masks you're working with. There's another way to, to do that. We'll talk about that. Then this is your finishing item right here which is your sizing. Uh, this is this is where we're going to adjust everything to the aspect ratio, the final resolution and aspect ratio that we want to deal with. This is the, basically the last step that a colorist does. Then they have the 3D stereoscopic button here. I believe that's only active on the studio version, and then data burns as well. And we're not really going to get into that, but those are the basic those are the basic icons here. To move over to the side, you have a room for keyframing. You can keyframe masks, you can keyframe color over time, you can keyframe brightness levels, a whole bunch of different things you can do over time. Up here represents, as we mentioned, you've got your mini timeline right here, and above that you've got the clip that you're actually grading. This is your gallery right here, and your gallery is going to be used for saving stills and save, saving grades that you can then later on apply to a specific color. 
And that is a basic overview of, of the layout of the color section inside of DaVinci Resolve. Now, a couple other things here. If you want to, if you're working on dual screens, if you have two screens, you will. This will save a lot of uh, a lot of headache here. If you can do this on two screens, it really makes a big difference. You can go under Workspace and go under Layout and tell it to, and turn the dual screen on. Right now, I don't have a secondary monitor connected, so I cannot turn that on but it will it will spread these items across two different screens it'll bring your scopes up and it's just really helpful to be doing this and gives you a lot more real estate to deal with uh, than the single workspace does but the single workspace works fine you just have some little workarounds and under this you can actually go into your primary workspace and your viewer mode and if you are working under with two different monitors you'll be able to go under workspace and change what monitor shows on what if you want your main monitor to be left or right and you have some options there as well